Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Creepy Tales and Urban Legends. I am your host, the Nightwalker. How do you like my new look? Went over to the dark side. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to do something just a little bit different, okay? What I want to do is I want to give you some helpful tips because we are coming to the Halloween. Um, people are going to want to be, you know, messing around in areas they shouldn't be messing with. They're going to want to talk, you know, about spirits and tarot cards, Ouija boards, things like that. So I think it would be pretty much a good idea to, you know, do a video telling you there are probably some things you should not do or things you should do if you're going to use a Ouija board, especially around the Halloween season. Okay. So now one of the things that you should never, ever do is disrespect the spirits. Okay. If you're going to use a Ouija board, and this goes for anything, you know, if you're going to dabble in the occult, this goes for Ouija boards, it goes for tarot cards, seances, you name it, okay? One thing you need to do is you need to take it seriously, because you don't know what could happen if you don't, all right? And even if you don't take it seriously, chances are pretty good, probably the people around you are going to, but you better take it seriously, because you don't know what could happen, all right? Get on YouTube. There are many, many horror stories. People talking about they used Ouija boards, they dabbled in the black arts, and they didn't take it seriously. So, you know, take it seriously. You really need to do that. Okay? Now, another thing that you need to remember is never, ever use a Ouija board when you are mentally or physically weak. If you're weak, what I mean by that, if you are sick, even if you have the flu, even if you got a head cold, do not use a Ouija board. That's not the time to do it, okay? Because the spirits, they can move around. And if you're mentally and or physically ill, that's a great way that they can enter into you and possess your lives and ruin you, okay? So that's one thing you really need to be aware of. If you're going to use a Ouija board, make sure you are in good physical health. You're not sick. You're not dying or any of that kind of stuff. And most importantly, do not. I'm being serious here, folks. Do not use a Ouija board if you are depressed. That is not a good idea. I promise you that. Okay? Now, another thing that you need to know about using a Ouija board is that it really is important that there are at least two or more people using the Ouija board. Okay? One person using a Ouija board is not a good idea because that's what can happen. The spirits can start messing with you. They can make you become more isolated. They could keep you from wanting to be around people. And you need to be around people. You need to have a strong, firm, solid backup. You know, you cannot sit here and be alone. And it can become addicting, which is another thing that you need to remember. Don't let yourself become addicted to playing with the Ouija board. And especially, don't let yourself become addicted to playing with a Ouija board when you are alone. It is not a good idea. I promise you that. Okay? Now, another thing that you might want to remember is that it is not a good idea to use a Ouija board in a cemetery. All right? Now, it might seem like that's the most opportune place for you to use one. But trust me, it is not. Not a good idea to use a Ouija board in the cemetery, all right? You don't know what kind of energies you're messing with. You don't know what can latch on to you. So I would strongly advise that you do not ever use a Ouija board in the cemetery. If you do, if something latches on to you, that's on you, man. So I would advise against that. One other thing that you might want to remember if you're using a Ouija board it's probably a very good idea if you don't trust what the spirits tell you, okay? They could say all kinds of things. They could say that they're somebody that you love, a friend or relative. They could say that they're somebody famous. They could say all kinds of things to get you to listen to them. But it's probably a better idea if you don't take it too seriously. Not a very good idea, no. And another thing that you might want to remember is that um, if you're going to use a Ouija board and if the plaque, you know, the planchette, if it starts to move down the alphabet, it starts to move along the numbers, you really need to sign out because that means that something bad is coming your way. 
And you don't want something bad coming your way. Trust me, you really don't. All right. If you, if the Ouija board starts to do that, or if the planchette starts moving to corners of the Ouija board, it's time for you to sign off. Because again, something really bad is coming. You don't want to be stuck with that. Okay. Another thing that you might want to remember is it would not be a bad idea to maybe ask about God. Okay. Because that's one good way to find out if you're dealing with a positive spirit or a negative spirit. Okay. Now, if you ask, you know, if you ask them about God and the spirit gets mad or gets irritated or starts, you know, if you see things, you know, really going awry, that means you've conjured up a bad spirit. Okay. But supposedly it's been proven that if you ask the spirits about God, all right, and you get peace, civility, things like that, you're going good. Another thing you really don't want to ask is do not ask when you're going to die. That's not a good idea. Okay. Everybody will tell you that. Anybody who's ever used a Ouija board, especially people who are experienced at using Ouija boards, they will tell you that it's not a good idea ever to ask about your death. If you know, if they know anything about it, if they can tell you anything about it. One thing you might want to remember doing is if you're going to use a Ouija board, it's probably not a bad idea for you to light some white candles. You know, many people will tell you if you're protected by the white light, it will help you. So, you know, just some food for thought. You might want to see about getting in some white candles if you're going to use a Ouija board. One thing also, too, that many people who have dealt with Ouija boards would probably tell you is a good idea. Keep track of your time. Because one thing that can happen is you could be starting to play with a Ouija board and you might think that you're playing for maybe like five minutes or ten minutes on the Ouija board. And then all of a sudden you realize, hey, you start playing with the Ouija board at like midnight and now it's like 3.30 in the morning all of a sudden, which means you've lost time. And that's not a good thing. Because if you lose time, you know what that means? It means that a spirit possibly could have entered into you and taken you over. And that's not a good thing. That means you're easy to possess, and that's not something you really, really want, especially if you're going to start dabbling in, in Ouija boards. Another thing you might want to remember, too, is, you know, always, always close out your sessions. Always say goodbye. If you st when you're done, you're done with all the questions, things like that. Like I said, it's always better if there's at least two people using the Ouija board. And always try to move the the planchette down and say goodbye and close out your session. If you don't close it out, whatever you contacted could still be lingering around. And that's not good. Not a good thing at all. Okay. So yeah, I strongly advise close out your sessions. All right. Another thing is, you know, you might be scared and you might want to get rid of the Ouija board. Now look online. There are videos there, are, you know, and look on, you know, just the internet. There are ways that they can tell you to properly get rid of or dispose of a Ouija board, but do not burn it. Okay? I'm not kidding around here, okay? Burning a Ouija board, not a good idea. All right? Many people who've done Ouija boards, they will tell you this. Not a good idea. Don't burn the Ouija board. Not a good idea. And then also, too, do not leave your Ouija board just laying around and do not leave the planchette on top of the Ouija board. Because, yeah. You don't know what could be happening going on behind your back. All right. Now, I honestly think that I've pretty much covered all the basic rules. So it's up to you now. Um, most people would tell you it's probably a better idea if you just don't bother with a Ouija board. But if you do, just try to remember some of the points that I taught you. And if you don't feel that my video is informative enough, there's plenty of information that can help you out online. So. Anyway, that's going to do it this week for uh, Creepy Tales and Urban Legends. This was more of a kind of a instructional video, but, you know, still, uh, I think we could make this do for this week. So, anyway, if anybody took the time to watch this video, I thank you for doing it, and I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you found it to be informative. And uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. There will be weekly videos posted. And uh, until then, this is the Nightwalker. And, uh, I say, hope you like my new look. So, uh, see you later. Bye bye.